Welcome to Stuff Talk, the UN Internet Radio Podcast. This is Helga Liefstetter again here at the UN headquarters in New York. And today we're honored to have a very special guest with us here in our studio, Mrs. Atefe Riasi, the Chief Information Technology Officer and Assistant Secretary General, Office of Information and Communications Technology in the Department of Management. Today our focus is again on Umocha. But this interview is the fourth in the series intended to bring Umocha as a concept and reality closer to staff and how its implementation will impact us will be discussed. Today we're also discussing it from the viewpoint of technology and how that may change the way we go about things. My guest today, Mrs. Riasi, joined the United Nations in spring 2013. She is a United States national born in Iran. She has a wide range of experience in both public and private sector before joining the UN. For example, the Metropolitan Transit Authority of New York City and the New York City Housing Authority. She has previously often had a leading role in focusing on delivering vital business transformations through the use of innovations and technology. You have now been with the UN for almost two years and entering at the time when the UN was getting ready for the launch of the largest enterprise resourcing planning project ever within the UN, a project we have been calling Umocha. In your opinion, how is the UN different from other organizations you have worked with when it comes to change management and technological transformations? Is the staff at the UN ready for this change? And is the system prepared? Change is difficult wherever you go. I try to change things uh, within my own family and my kids, and it's extremely difficult. So you look at an organization this large with so many different entities who have their own mandate and their own mission. And now we have Yemoja that says we have to do things the same way. And from my experience with ERPs, it's often not about the technology. It's about the way we work. It's about the way people react to technology. So um, so I think change in general is difficult, and innovation uh, is difficult, and modernization is difficult, and transformation is difficult. But without it, we are all doomed. I'm truly awed by the commitment and the passion of the Emoja team. I think they've done an incredible job. Deploying Emoja, I think the commitment of the stakeholders and the sponsors to say, yes, we are going to transform, yes, we're going to modernize, has been incredible. Technology is an enabler for a vision we have set forth. And the vision says that, you know, there's a lot of frustrations around processes. It takes too long. And how can we make it easier for the users? That's what it's about. Now, if you can do it using pen and pencil, great. But if you can't, you use technology. And in this case, we're using technology to make the life of our users, our customers, better and easier than make it more complex. So if you look at processes that are under Yemoja from financials, accounts receivable, accounts payable, procurement, travel, human resources, these are all the areas that with automation, with removal of processes that are lengthy, with streamlining, with visibility, with self-service, we can give the power back to the user so they can see how these processes are taking place. They can initiate it. They can have visibility to it. It's like today, you know, when you order something online, you get to see where your package is every step of the way. Our employees are used to embracing technology in their personal life. Then they come to work, and what we give them is 30 years behind of what they used to in their personal life. So I think we underestimate what the users can stomach when it comes to change. On some level, they've been sitting there waiting for us to give it to them because there are lots of frustrations with processes that are difficult for them, and they have to come in and they have to deliver on their mandates every day, and they still have to deal with these complex processes. And I think what they will see when Emoja is fully deployed and matured, because it takes time, they're going to see a lot easier interaction with key departments 
that have to do a lot of these processes. And they're going to have availability and access to information because a lot of what we do is we make these tough decisions and difficult decisions, important decisions, without having access to information. Just this issue about saying, for example, that now it will be sort of more like a big package of technology where you can almost do anything in it. It's finance, it's you know procurement, it's everything about yourself, self-service, etc. Uh, do you feel as an information technology officer that it will then therefore throw out a lot of old obsolete systems that you have had to maintain yourselves or I mean within your team, ram uh, you know, ramification of the IT that will clean out a lot of, you know, dead wood systems that then therefore will also enlighten a little bit the management of systems within IT. When you have thousands of systems, thousands of ways of working, it's very difficult for employees to operate and operate well. So I do think Emoja is going to get rid of a lot of the systems and standardize. Uh, we have a plan under the ICT strategy to look at all the remaining applications. Over 3,000 applications from an entity that should have 300. That's the right number. We have over 1,500 websites. We should have a couple of hundred. So within the ICT strategy, we're going to harmonize and standardize, and we're going to make sure we have good solutions so our employees can operate, can see, can get the information, can have the workflow done, and that's the promise of Emoja, it's the promise of the ICT strategy. How would you describe your role as a CTO when it comes to Emoja project so far? What would you see as the most important change relating to the individual staff member, for example? If you look at the banking sector or travel sector, 20 years ago, we go to a travel agent. We walk through a travel agent, we get our ticket, and after lots of discussion, we get we get a ticket issued. Or we go to a bank teller, and you can only go between 9 to 3, Monday through Friday. So if you look at today with ATMs, with online banking, if you look at travel where you can do your own travel, the empowerment that technology has given to the customer, to the consumer, to the user is tremendous. And that's the change the employees would see with the emoja. They're going to see that if I wanted to do my time, I go online, do my time. If I want to ask for a vacation day, I go online, I do that. If I want to look at my benefits, I go online and do it. If I want to do it at 2 in the morning or if I want to do it at 10 in the morning, I can do that. If I want to add dependents, I can do that. Is there anything that they could prepare or is it maybe not even necessary because it will kind of speak for itself once it's opened up that famous day of October for the people at UN headquarters? I think there'd be lots of wonderful videos and trainings that would be online that they can see. So it would show them how to go through the self-service module. And it's not difficult because when we as consumers went and interacted with an ATM in a bank, we didn't really have training. It was simple. It was easy. We learned it. When we went online to do our travel, it was simple. It was easy. We got it. So I do think our employees are going to learn this very quickly. And they'd be teaching us a lot because that feedback from them saying, look, if you do this this way, it's easier, is really important to the Emoja team, to my team, so we can make their life better and take away some of the noise and some of the frustrations that they have every day. So I think it would be easy. I know there is nervousness. There's always nervousness when there's a new system. There's this whole learning anxiety. Am I going to learn it? But it's not going to be complex. It's going to put the power in the hands of the employees and the users so they can manage everything that they need to do their job around the administrative functions. How would you respond then to the question that somebody said to me in the cafeteria this morning? If it's all going to be so easy, why is everybody being pulled into a special Umoja team at the UN headquarters? And why is OSET now even looking to get more staff? SAP is a very complex system. But the self-service module, learning the self-service, learning to go in and do your dependence or do change your benefits is, is not difficult. Umoja sits on an application we call SAP. It's an enterprise resource management system. It's a highly complex system. And we as an organization have to learn it. Most uh, employees don't have to learn much except the self-service module, but employees that are in HR, finance, procurement, travel, logistics, they have to learn the system because they used to work on the other 700 systems we had. We have a highly fragmented structure in the UN. We have 70 IT shops. We have thousands of applications. 
We have many networks. We have 131 help desks. So you look at it from a customer's perspective, from an employee's perspective. I'm trying to access Inspire to do my EPAS. Well, I had a different help desk to call. But then I need to access Umoja. Oh, that's a different help desk I need to call to support me on that. How about connections or documentations? How about the systems that my department offers? How about my desktop or my phone? Different help desks. So as a customer, you have to call 20 people to find out who can help you to fix something. That is not customer service. We oh, are creating five global help desks, and these global help desks, what they're going to do is they're going to take your calls, and mm -hmm. they would do the triage. So if you have an issue with Inspira or Connections or INE, these are different systems, you may wish somebody can say, all right, let me help you, and I own the ticket. From an employee's perspective, this fragmentation of ICT is not helpful because they have multiple systems that don't talk to each other. One department, a global department, could have 20 IT shops. Two, three in New York, two, three in Geneva, four, five in Bangkok. How does a department that's supposed to work globally operate when they have 20 IT shops who have developed 300 different systems that none of them talk to each other? IT has to be streamlined and harmonized and consistent support for the user. The key issues that you deal with on a daily basis in relation to Omoja, what kind of issues are, are those? Are they accessibility issues? Are they, you know, baseline issues, data issues? What are they? Omoja is an application. We have thousands of applications. An application rides on the network that is managed through the ICT structure. You have to access it through a desktop which is managed by the 70 IT shops across the UN. You have access rights and access software to get to it. You have interfaces from Yamoja to many other systems that are managed by the larger organization. You have security issues on the system itself and within the application. You have hosting issues within Yamoja. You have data analytics, you have data cleansing, you have... So all of those areas that have to be helped us support, all of those areas are within the ICT community. They need to get coordinated, need to get streamlined, need to get harmonized, and they need to be ready. Because when Yamoja comes in June, having 40 help desks doesn't help. We need to build those help desks. We need to make sure the network works. Because when there is a problem, you don't know whether it's your desktop, your network, the system, the hosting, access, you don't know what it is. And all of those pieces of the puzzle have to work. Will they be ready? They better be ready. Now, would they be ready 100%? I think that always when you deploy a system, you got this learning curve. You got the first two months that things get worse and then things get better. And, and we're going to go through growing pains. We're going to go through the learning curve. We're going to make sure we fix things and the networks are up and configurations are right. They can't afford it, but together we can. Are there some phased approaches that you can propose to the organization that would eliminate a little bit that fear to demonstrate to then this large group of staff that apparently is sort of some of them thinking is something going to happen to me? The ICT strategy has a five-year life, and we're looking at this in a very pragmatic, phased approach. The issue of trust has to be dealt with through service improvements. So I understand, I mean, generally in any sector you go, if the center doesn't deliver, departments would develop their own. The center has to deliver. The center is not a centralized model, let me be very clear. We are creating regional hubs. So we have an America's region. We have a European region, which is going to be out of Geneva. We have an African region out of Nairobi, and we have SCAP. We also have three application hubs. One is New York, one is in Vienna, one is in Bangkok. And it is the responsibility of these hubs and centers to deliver services. We're also building the five help desks out of Brindisi, New York, Geneva, Nairobi, and Bangkok. So this is not a central model. This is a consolidation of a local market. You may have a local office that has seven IT shops in it. I, I expect that local office to consolidate within the local market. Then you have a regional hub that has 20 IT shops. We expect that to get consolidated. Umoja does not work in an environment where you've got 70 IT shops, 30 networks, 130 help desks. It doesn't work. So it is a mandate, it's a prerequisite of Umoja to get a 
coherent approach to ICT. And finally, cybersecurity is a big issue for us. It's not only that you get a virus in your desktop. My biggest issue is someone attacking our medical system, air traffic system, our industrial systems. All of these systems are connected to the internet. And to ensure that the systems are secure and the employees are protected, we have to have a cohesive ICT structure that is secure, that's resilient, and it works. Now for you within uh, OICT in the coming months, because Umoja is supposed to be deployed with a new one headquarters here in New York already in November. Is there anything that you would like to share with staff that are fearing and that are feeling kind of nervous or not really even ready to pay too much attention to it, what is the one thing that you can kind of say to them at this point that could perhaps help them to think, well, let me look into it or let me prepare myself for that then? And, or is there anything that you can share now that would be very useful for them to hear? Being pragmatic and a realist, I would say it would get worse before it gets better. But when you look at what's happening today, five years from now, or three years from now, you say, why didn't we do it sooner? And this was my experience when I deployed the MetroCard. Lots of resistance, it was difficult, but after it was deployed, people said, why did you let us use those tokens for 50 years? Couldn't you have done it sooner? So big change is, of course, disruptive. And we're all nervous about change. It is completely normal to feel that way, but we must embrace this transformation. We must embrace this modernization. We need to do everything we can to make it successful. This was the fourth interview in a series of Umocha podcasts at the UN Internet. And our guest today was Atefe Riasi, Communications and Information Technology Officer and Assistant Secretary General within the Department of Management. You can find the complete interview at umoja.un.org, United Nations Umoja YouTube channel, the Umoja community on UNIT Connections, or on iTunes. We are looking forward to your comments on this podcast. Please visit UN Internet, I seek. This was our Stuff Talk, UN Internet radio podcast. I'm your host, Helga. Have a great day.